Hello everyone, your board exams are already going on, so we thought to help you in the chapter of cash flow statement as well. Today in my session, I am going to take a quick revision of cash flow statement. Now this chapter cash flow statement has a weightage of almost 7 marks in your board exams. Okay, in CBSE board exams, it will have a weightage of almost 7 marks. You will have one question in MCQ of 1 mark and you will have one subjective long answer of 6 marks. Total weightage of 7 marks in your exams. So in today's session, I'll be giving you brief tricks of how to identify the cash flow statements three main activities operating activities investing activities financing activities and after that we will solve one question which was asked in past years board exams to understand the overall flow of cash flow statement so i'll be taking up a quick revision that's why i'll take up the things in a bit speed it's a revision which is going on so how to identify the cash flow from operating activities we first understand it okay all of you can take a notebook and write along with me that will really help you a lot just couple of days to go for your upcoming accountancy board exams so this half an hour one hour if you write along with me then you'll not have to prepare it again so operating activities if i talk about then How do we find cash flow from operating activities? What we do is we start with closing balance of profit and loss account. Okay, we shall start with closing balance of profit and loss account. From that we will minus opening balance of profit and loss account. And what we shall obtain is profit during the year. From the balance sheet. Under the heading reserves and surplus, you'll find closing balance of PL account as well as opening balance of PL account. You are given with last year and current year information. Current year will give you closing balance, last year will give you opening balance. Difference of two will be the profit during the year. Now, what you have to remember is you have to add. What you have to add? Non cash expenses. Okay. Now, non cash expenses by default will include the amounts of provisions, appropriations, then it will also include the amount of reserves. So all these things, non-cash expenses, provisions and appropriations we have to add. Examples are depreciation, goodwill, return of even non-operating expenses you have to add. Non-operating means which are not of operating nature. We are going by indirect method. So we add the expenses to cancel its effect. Okay. So goodwill written off. Then appropriations like transfer to reserve. Any amount which you transfer to reserves. Provisions like provision for tax. Provisions like proposed dividend also if they are no more a contingent liability. Then non-operating expenses like interest, interest on loan, interest on debentures. They are non-operating expenses. So they will also get added over here. Dividends paid. If any dividend is paid to the shareholder, it is a financial expense and not an operating expense. So that is also added. So all these things will come under non-cash expense provisions appropriations and non-operating expenses that we have to add okay adding all these amounts further you will subtract non-cash income and non-operating income okay indirect methods so these incomes we subtract to remove its effect from the current year's profit. Normally incomes are added. We are going by indirect method. These are non-operating, non-cash. So we remove their effect to get the cash flow from 
operating activities. Now, non-cash and non-operating incomes will include the interest received on investments. Okay, then rent received on property. If you receive rent on the property, then that is investing activities income and not an operating activity income. So that also we have to remove by adding it back. Then, other than that, profit on sale of asset. Same way, if there is a loss on sale of asset, then you will add it. Any loss on sale of asset will come over here. Okay, loss by fire, loss on sale of asset, these all are non-operating expenses. They will be added. And profit on sale of asset is a non-operating income that will be subtracted. If dividend is received on shares, then that is also an investing income that will also be subtracted. So these are non-cash incomes, non-operating incomes which we have to subtract. And subtracting that, what you will get is operating profit. You will call it as operating profit. I am using the initials in short forms. Before changes in working capital. Operating profit before changes in working capital. Now after that what we have to do is you have to remember that current assets okay this is the shortcut which you can remember current assets and cash have inverse relation current liabilities and cash have direct relation now in exams if you get confused with this then you try to understand it with the example of debtor for current asset and creditor for current liability Okay, so if I ask you that last year's debtors were 50,000, current year's debtors are 40,000, what does it indicate? That we have received 10,000 from the debtors. So what happens? Debtors are decreasing, but we have received the money, so cash is increasing. Debtors are decreasing, cash is increasing, means inverse relation. So whenever in exams, you get confused that does current asset have direct relation or current liability have direct relation? You feed in your mind the example of debtors and you'll understand it. Take imaginary figures that opening debtors 50,000, closing debtors 40,000. Debtors are decreasing by 10,000. Now when will debtors decrease by 10,000 when we have received 10,000 from them? So cash in our business is increasing, inverse relation. And same way, if I take example of creditors, opening creditors 50, closing creditors 40, creditors are decreasing by 10,000. But what does that mean? We have paid them 10,000 rupees. So here creditors are also decreasing. Cash in our business is also decreasing. That is which relation? Direct relation. So you remember current assets have inverse relation with cash and current liabilities have direct relation with cash. So how will we record that? We will add current assets have inverse relation. So we will add decrease in current assets and current liabilities have direct relation so we will add increase in current liabilities okay and what we will minus current assets have inverse relation so we'll minus increase in current assets and we'll minus decrease in current liabilities and then what you will obtain is operating profit after changes in working capital. Operating profit after changes in working capital. Okay. And at the end, you'll subtract income tax paid or you would add income tax refund. You'll subtract income tax paid, add income tax refund. And what you'll obtain is cash flows from operating activities. Okay. So this is how you find cash flows from operating activities. In brief, how you can remember this entire part. In brief, how you can remember this entire part. You all note down this brief thing. Very important for you all. This will really help you a lot. In brief, how you can remember is entire portion of operating. How you can remember is just remember it this way. Closing PNL 
माइनस ओपनिंग पी एन एल क्लोजिंग पी एन एल माइनस ओपनिंग पी एन एल देर आफ्टर प्लस नॉन कैश एंड नॉन ऑपरेटिंग एक्सपेंसिस माइनस नॉन कैश एंड नॉन ऑपरेटिंग इनकम्स देन यू रिमेंबर करेंट असेट्स इनवर्स रिलेशनशिप करेंट लाइबिलिटीज डायरेक्ट रिलेशनशिप एंड देन माइनस इनकम टैक्स पेड प्लस इनकम टैक्स रिफंड रिसीव दिस एंटायर पोर्शन विल गिव यू कैश फ्लोज फ्रॉम ऑपरेटिंग एक्टिविटीज only this much you have to remember this will be the entire shortcut for the entire portion of cash flow from operating activities how can you remember that very simple closing pnl minus opening pnl plus non cash and non operating expenses minus non cash and non operating incomes thereafter current assets inverse relation current liabilities direct relation after that minus income tax paid plus income tax refund so this much if you remember you'll be easily able to find cash flows from operating activities okay going further okay first let us take up with investing activities now for investing activities we divide outflows and inflows so how do you find the outflows and inflows of cash flow from investing activities rather uh, let me take up first inflows then outflows so inflows means where cash comes in due to investing activities and outflows means where cash goes out due to investing activities okay so where do you find the cash comes in due to investing activities and what do you find where do you find exactly the cash goes out due to investing activities one is sale of assets any asset sold tangible asset like machinery plant building furniture intangible asset like sale of goodwill patents trademarks investments sale of non current investments this all will result into inflow of cash due to investing activities okay so sale of assets is one thing you have to remember other than that interest received on investments <clears throat> dividend received on investments these three are the major inflows of investing activities okay on the contrary purchase of assets means any assets tangible <clears throat> intangible investments any of the assets you buy the cash will go out and other than that there is nothing like interest received and there is nothing like dividend received so very simple in investing also you remember very few things i have seen this revision i have made the things very simple for you very few things you have to remember and remembering by few you will be able to solve more in your exams so you remember sale of assets assets will include tangible intangible investments all the three interest received dividend received and in outflow there is only one thing you have to remember purchase of assets that's it purchase of tangible asset will also be included here intangible will also be included here as well as purchase of investments will also be included over here so this is what you have to remember now going further financing activities <clears throat> again we'll compare inflows with outflows so first we take up with inflows and then versus outflows so inflows you can all can remember is issue of shares or debentures okay <clears throat> if we issue shares in the market equity shares or preference shares we are going to receive the money if we issue debentures in the market public deposits bonds in the market 
we are going to receive the money. Then loans borrowed, we are going to receive the money. <clears throat> Even if it is a short term loan, like bank overdraft, cash credit, it will be coming in financing activities inflow. Same way outflow will be redemption. Redemption means repayment. Redemption of shares. Equity shares cannot be redeemed, so redemption of shares will include only preference shares by default or debentures. So repayment of shares or debentures, money goes out, cash goes out. So that is outflow of financing activity. Loan repayment, loan borrowed in past, if you repay in the current year, then that will be outflow of in financing activities. Okay. Other than that, <clears throat> interest paid on loan and debentures. Any amount of interest paid. See here also, <clears throat> this interest paid was taken as non-operating activity. Dividend paid was taken as non-operating activity. Interest on investments and dividend receipts were taken as non-operating activities. So they have been included already over here. Interest received, dividend received. Same way, interest paid and dividend paid will be outflow of financing activities. So how can you remember financing activities? Again, very simple. What things will come in, in inflow? Only two things. Issue of shares or debentures and loan borrowed. Contrary to that, opposite of that, redemption of shares and debentures and loan repayment are outflow of invest financing activities. And two extra things, interest paid and dividend paid. To summarize quickly once again, what all things will fall into operating, financing and investing? <clears throat> operating, closing PNL minus opening PNL plus non-cash and non-operating expense minus non-cash and non-operating incomes, current assets, inverse relation, current liabilities, direct relation, minus tax paid plus income tax refund. In investing, how you can remember is, in inflows, only three things, sale of assets, interest received, dividend received, even rent received on property will be Investing activities inflow. Outflow only one, purchase of assets. And financing inflows are only two, issue of shares or debentures and loan borrowed. Outflow, redemption of shares or debentures, repayment of loan and other than that interest paid and dividend paid. These opposite things you can remember over here. Okay. If interest is received or dividend is received, it is investing activities inflow. If interest is paid or dividend is paid, it is financing activities outflow. Now, all of you can make a rough format of balance sheet. Okay, this format of balance sheet, you all can take a screenshot if you want. And what I'll be doing is, in this balance sheet, because see, in cash flow statement, you will always be given with balance sheet only. Okay, you all will be always given with balance sheet only in cash flow statement. So, in that balance sheet, which items will affect Investing activities, operating activities, financing activities is very important. So once and for all, you all make a rough balance sheet and understand which item of balance sheets has impact on which activity. In exams, it will become super easy for you to identify that and record in cash flow statement. So over here, I'll be helping you out in that. Okay, what you all can do is, you can pause the video and first you make this balance sheet what you, what you see on the screen. Pause the video. In short, you can use the abbreviations and make this balance sheet entirely and then you all start the video again, resume the video again and I am doing the markings, you people do those markings. Which items of balance sheet will affect which activity, operating or investing or financing, you do the marking along with me. Okay. See what we will be doing is, operating activities will mark it as O plus and O minus, these things will mark it as O plus. These things will mark it as O minus. Okay, current assets items will mark it as current asset plus and current asset or liability minus. Okay, current asset plus and current liability plus and minus. So that will help us to identify at which stage of cash flow statement we have to do that. Then, other than that, uh, tax paid will mark it as O minus income tax refund O plus. Investing inflows I plus. Outflows I minus plus means cash is coming in a minus means it's going out. Financing activities inflows will mark it as F plus and outflows will mark it as F minus. So which item will affect which thing? Let us see that. See, share capital will always affect financing activity. 
so if the shares are issued then financing activities inflow if the shares are redeemed debentures are redeemed like shares are preference shares are redeemed then f minus financing activities outflow reserves and surplus will always affect operating activities and it will be the starting point stpt means starting point of our cash flow statement how do you start the cash flow statement closing balance of profit and loss account minus opening balance of profit and loss account where do you get that profit and loss account from reserves and surplus so reserves and surplus in every question will mark it as what o s t p t s t starting p t point o s t p t opening operating activities starting point will be obtained from reserves and surplus non current liability long term borrowings will always include debentures so debentures will affect financing activities inflow and outflow if they are issued inflow redeemed outflow and its interest will have effect on operating activities inflow so o plus operating activities means non operating expense so its interest will have effect on o plus and issue and redemption of debentures will have effect on financing activities inflow and outflow so all of you make this rough format of balance sheet and market so in exams you are easily able to identify which item of balance sheet affects which activity within current liabilities short term borrowing will always affect financing activity if cash credit or overdraft is borrowed then financing activity is inflow if we have repaid the money then outflow trade payables will always affect operating activities within that current liabilities have inverse relation that we will remember direct relation so if trade payables are increasing will add it if trade payables are decreasing we will minus it direct relation other current liabilities will again affect operating activities but will mark it as cl plus or minus in the question we'll be doing the markings as cl plus or minus if other current liabilities are increasing direct relation plus they are decreasing then direct relation minus regarding provision for tax last year current year whatever is last year's provision for tax okay in fact in your exams first you'll be given with current year and second column you'll be given with last year so last year's provision for tax will always be done o minus at the end what is that last year's every year's tax we pay in the next year so whatever provision for tax was made in the last year that we will pay in the current year so in income tax paid over here income tax paid you will subtract it at the end so whatever is the amount in last year's column for provision for tax will do o minus and where at the end and means will subtract it in operating activities but at the end and current year's provision o plus provision means non cash expense so here provision for tax we will do o plus okay and that we will do in the beginning itself this we will do in the beginning this we will do at the end so in short term provisions it will affect operating activity only but how will it affect last year's provision will minus at the end current year's provision will add at the beginning in operating activities fixed assets tangible or intangible tangible will always affect investing activities if we are purchasing then i minus outflow we are selling then i plus intangible now sale of intangible means if intangible asset is decreasing it will always be i plus but if intangible asset is okay this is if it is decreasing it means it is sale of asset so always minus but if it is increasing if intangible asset is okay decreasing can be i minus sale of asset or it can also be o plus return off if goodwill was 1 lakh last year current year 90000 so 10000 can be written off or it may be sold if no information is given we'll take it as written off means if no information is given and intangible asset is decreasing what effect will we give in cash flow statement o plus operating activities non cash expense okay and if the uh, intangible asset is increasing then its effect will always be i minus it is purchase of intangible asset that will always result into i minus outflow of cash flows due to investing activities so in case of decrease either it can be i plus sale of intangible assets or o plus non cash expense in absence of any information will always take it as o plus non cash expense non current investments will always affect investing activities 
sale of investments I plus, purchase of investments I minus. Inventories will affect operating activities. Current assets have inverse relation, so current assets plus or minus. If inventories are increasing, inverse relation will minus. If inventories are decreasing, inverse relation we will plus. Trade receivables will also affect operating activities. Debtors example only we had seen. Again here we will follow current assets have inverse relation. Cash and cash equivalent will be our answer at the end. And other current assets again will affect operating activities with current assets as inverse relationship. So all of you if you want you can take screenshot of this again. Which item of balance sheet will affect which activity if you master this format thoroughly then any question 80 to 90 percent will be easily able to solve and the weightage of this would be six marks in your exams this kind of question will be asked for six marks in your exams okay so i hope everyone has taken a proper attention to these points this was a brief and quick revision to understand how to make a cash flow statement now we will solve an example to actually understand these markings what i have given you let us take up with that. So we will be solving board exam 2022 questions. Okay, the paper set which was asked outside Delhi set one I am solving. This was asked for 5 marks in your exams, 5 to 6 marks. In the current board exams, the weightage will be of 6 marks. Look at it. From the following balance sheet of Jai Limited as at 31322, calculate cash flow statement. You have to make the entire cash flow statement. Now what you all can do is, you can take a screenshot of this entire question. <clears throat> okay, all of you remember this properly. What you can do is, take a screenshot of this question. Take out a printout if possible. And the markings which I am doing, if not possible, take a screenshot, write the question in brief. If you have board exam question papers with you, then take it out. 2022 outside Delhi paper said you take it out and do the markings along with Yes, so if you have that question papers set with you, you all take it out and do the markings along with me. First, I'll be doing, doing the markings over here and after that we'll solve the question. The markings which I taught you just now, okay? Now, first, equity and liabilities, shareholders funds, share capital is given in note 1. Look at note 1, share capital. Equity share capital, see this is last year's column and this is current year's column. 31,321 means last year, 31,322 means current year. Last year it was 30 lakhs, current year it is 50 lakhs. Now when is it possible? Equity share capital opening balance 30, closing balance 50, more. That is possible when we have issued shares in the public. <clears throat> Issue of shares means we are getting the money. So as I told you earlier, this will affect financing activity F+. plus. Financing activities inflow. 20 lakhs of shares issued in the public will be shown where in the cash flow statement financing activities inflow <clears throat> reserves and surplus look at note 2 this is surplus balance in the statement of profit and loss okay opening 6 lakhs closing 10 lakhs i told you this will always be marked as o s t p t starting point how will we start the cash flow statement with this <clears throat> we'll start with closing balance of profit and loss account 10 lakhs minus opening balance of profit and loss account 6 lakhs this will be the starting point of cash flow statement thereafter long term borrowings note 3 look at note 3 what does long term borrowing include 10% <clears throat> debentures opening 4 lakhs closing 8 lakhs means we have issued debentures of 4 lakhs see the additional information 4 lakh 10% debentures were issued on 31st March 22 issue of debentures will be taken as financing activities inflow F plus just now in the format of balance sheet these things itself I made you mark that which items of balance sheet will affect which activities okay so financing activities inflow what amount 4 lakhs now I also told you that here interest will affect operating activity now since we have issued 4 lakhs of debentures at the end of the year means whatever was the opening balance 4 lakhs that money only we are using throughout the year so we have to pay interest only on 4 lakhs 4 lakhs 10 percent 40,000 is the interest what we have to pay and that interest will have effect of O plus operating activities non-operating expense okay 
Now here you all can remember one tip I'll give you, one trick I'll give you, shortcut method I'll give you. Whether debentures are issued or redeemed, I repeat, whether debentures are issued or redeemed, you can note it down somewhere. This is very important. If the date is given end of the year, you count interest on opening amount. Date given closing, opposite. Closing date, count interest on opening amount. Opening date, count interest on closing amount. You'll always get it correct. Whether debentures are issued or redeemed. If they say debentures are issued on 1st April, count interest on 31st March, closing balance. If they say debentures are issued or redeemed on 31st March, opposite of that, count interest on 1st April opening. Always count interest. Okay, always count interest on opposite amount. What do you mean by opposite amount over here? If closing date is given, count on opening amount. If opening date is given, count on closing amount. Opposite amount. That is what you have to remember. Here 31st March, so opening balance will count on 4 lakhs. 4 lakhs, 10%, 40,000, O plus operating activities, non-operating expense. Current liabilities, what did I tell you? Direct relation. Trade payables, so first of all it will affect operating activity. Now current liabilities have direct relation. 3 lakhs to 2 lakhs is decreasing, decreasing so we will also minus direct relation. Other current liabilities, what does it include? Outstanding rent. Now outstanding rent will also affect operating activities in current liability, direct relation. 1 lakh to 3 lakh is increasing so plus. Increasing, direct relation plus. Decreasing, direct relation minus. Short term provision, what does it include? Provision for tax. Now what did I tell you for provision for tax? Last year's amount of provision for tax will be done O minus at the end. You'll subtract it at the end as income tax paid. And opening balance, you'll do O plus in the beginning along with non-cash expense. So, last year's tax 1 lakh will pay in the current year. So, income tax paid will minus at the end. Current year 1 lakh 50,000 we have made a provision for tax in the current year. So, that is a non-cash expense. Provision means you are transferring money from one pocket to another pocket only. Cash does not go out of the business. So as a non-cash expense, we will add it. In assets, non-current assets, fixed assets, tangible assets. Which are the tangible assets? Land. Now, 40 lakhs to 6 lakhs is increasing. Means we have purchased land of 20 lakhs. That is investing activities outflow. Intangible assets remain same. So no effect. But I told you generally in tangible assets, if they are decreasing, it will affect operating activities as written off. But here no effect. Okay, intangible assets will have no effect because the amount is remaining same. Current assets, inventories, 40,000 to 7 lakhs. Now current assets will affect operating activities. Current assets have direct or inverse, inverse relation. It's increasing, so we will minus inverse relation. Difference amount 6 lakhs, 60,000. Inventories are increasing, so cash will decrease. Inverse relation, we will minus. And cash and cash equivalent will be our answer at the end. So with these markings, let us start solving our question. What all of you can do is pause the video and make the format of cash flow statement. In exams, ensure that you give proper headings, make proper format using scale and pencil. Okay, otherwise you don't expect full marks in your exams. Until the formats are proper, you are not going to get full marks. If you want to score full 6 marks, give this type of heading. Cash flow statement of Jail Limited. Name of the company you can see at the top is Jail Limited. For the year ended 31st March 22, make 3 columns, bigger column for particulars and 2 small columns at the end for amounts. Pause the video and do this and then we start solving it. Now, <clears throat> let's start. Very first, we will begin with Cash flow option A. Okay, first we'll begin with A. Cash flow from operating activities. First we'll start with this cash flow from operating activities. Now, how do you have to start? We discussed closing balance of profit and loss account. Now all of you see over here, what was the closing balance of profit and loss account? 
over here you all can see closing balance of profit and loss account is 10 lakhs reserves and surplus opening is 6 lakhs closing is 10 lakhs opening is 6 lakhs so 10 lakhs over here we will start with 10 lakhs from that we will minus less opening balance of profit and loss account six lakhs okay now over here difference will be obtained as four lakhs okay difference will be obtained here as four lakhs ten lakhs minus six lakhs four lakhs now what do we have to add over here non cash and non operating expenses whatever things we have marked as o plus in our question whatever things we have marked as o plus in our question without ca and cl markings right now current assets and current liabilities are not to be taken so o plus or o minus items but without the markings of ca and cl will record over here let's see that okay very first you all can see over here we have done the markings of O plus interest of 40,000 on debentures which we discussed that interest we have to pay on opening balance why because the date was given 31st March so interest on debentures we will add which is worth rupees 40,000 since there are more amounts we'll show each amount in the inner column then take total in the outer column <clears throat> okay thereafter now these items are marked trade payables O but CL is marked so that will take in the next stage. Without CA and CL marked items, we have this 1,50,000 marked as O plus. That is provision for tax. Current years provision for tax. Okay. So provision for tax. What is the amount over there? Provision for tax. 1,50,000. So that we have to take over here. Provision for tax. Amount is 1,50,000. Okay. Other than that, do we have any other thing marked as O plus or O minus? No other thing is there. Only two things are marked as O plus. This is O minus at the end. You all can see this portion is to be done at the end. So not right now. Okay. Other than that, O minus also there is no item like non-cash or non-operating income. So this amount will take in the outer column. That is 2 lakhs. No, 1 lakh 90,000. 40,000 plus 1 lakh 50,000 is 1 lakh 90,000. And... 4 lakhs plus 1 lakh 90,000 is 5 lakh 90,000. So 5 lakh 90,000 we obtain up till now. There is nothing to be done O minus. This will be called as operating profit before changes in working capital. Operating profit before changes in working capital. Now from that we will add and minus current assets and current liabilities items. So O marked items but marked as CA and CL plus. First we will do plus, then we will do minus. So you all can see in current assets and current liabilities, this other current liabilities we have marked CL plus. 3 lakh and 1 lakh, the difference is 2 lakhs. Other current liabilities includes which thing over here? Outstanding rent. Outstanding rent is increasing by, outstanding rent over here is increasing by 2 lakhs. So cash is also increasing by 2 lakhs. So that will mention over here increase in outstanding rent we have to add 2 lakhs then which other item we have marked as plus this straight payable is marked as minus in current assets also it marked as minus only only one item is marked as plus in CA and CL <clears throat> so that will take in the outer column 2 lakhs if we add it we'll get 5 lakh 90 plus 2 lakh 7 lakh 90 thousand okay 7,90,000. Now we will do minus items. So less over here. Less. Now in CA and CL what we have marked as minus. You all can see over here. Trade payables we have marked CL minus. 2 lakhs and 3 lakhs. It's decreasing by 1 lakh so we have to subtract it. Okay decreasing by 1 lakh so we have to subtract it. Decrease in trade payables. We have to subtract 1 lakh. I hope everyone is able to understand this. Then, 
after that ca minus over here you all can see in inventories we have marked as ca minus 7 lakh and 40 thousand means current asset is inverse relation it's increasing by 6 lakh 60 thousand so we have to subtract here 6 lakh 60 thousand increase in inventories 6 lakh 60 thousand total 7 lakh 60 thousand we have to minus now 7 lakh 90 minus 7 lakh 60 thousand 30 thousand what will this 30 thousand be this 30 thousand will be cash flows uh, sorry operating profit after changes in working capital okay now working capital items we have considered current assets and current liabilities so operating profit after changes in working capital now at the end what we have to do is we have to subtract income tax paid okay that we had marked as O minus at the end you all can see over here income tax paid O minus at the end 1 lakh rupees this 1 lakh we have to subtract at the end in operating activities so if we subtract over here 1 lakh 30,000 minus 1 lakh will give you minus 70,000 so I am writing it in bracket what is this minus 70,000 cash flows from operating activities okay this 1 lakh 70,000 sorry minus 70,000 is our answer A cash flows from operating activities so one answer we have obtained now we begin with financing activities second part sorry not financing investing investing activities that is our second part here we'll take all the items marked as i plus and i minus so if you see over here then there is no item marked as i plus but in i minus we have tangible assets where we have purchased land of 20 lakhs 40 lakhs and 60 lakhs you all can see here we have purchased land worth rupees 20 lakhs so that will take in outflow of investing activities we will mention over here purchase of land purchase of land and since it is outflow we will write in bracket 20 lakh rupees okay since it is outflow we will write it in bracket 20 lakh rupees so overall you will again get negative amount of 20 lakh rupees I hope everyone is clear with this what is this 20 lakhs over here cash flows B option cash flows from investing activities negative cash flows operating also has negative cash flows investing also has negative cash flows now we'll take up with the third item that is cash flows from financing activities all the items marked as F very first you all can see over here we have marked share capital 40 lakhs 30 lakhs 50 lakhs 20 lakhs where we issued shares of 20 lakhs so that will record over here issue of equity shares worth rupees 20 lakhs okay issue of equity shares worth rupees 20 lakhs that is inflow of share uh, cash flow in case of investing financing activities then over here again we have marked F plus 8 lakhs and 4 lakhs we have issued debentures of 4 lakhs that is also inflow of financing activities so we will mark over here issue of debentures that is worth rupees 4 lakhs then after that this 40,000 which is interest paid will also be financing activities outflow interest paid will come in operating activities also financing activities also and there is no other item in this question so interest paid on debentures okay the interest paid on debentures 40,000 will have effect on financing activities outflow as well that will write in bracket so all the three things are covered now 20 lakhs plus 4 lakhs 24 lakhs minus 40,000 23 lakhs 60,000 is the cash flows from financing activities okay this will mark it as cash flows from financing activities now what we have to do we have to do a plus b plus c changes in cash and cash equivalents 
that is a plus b plus c a plus b plus c means what okay over here you call, can see a from operating activities there is an outflow of 70,000 so minus 70,000 okay minus 70,000 then from investing also minus 20 lakhs so minus 20 lakhs 70,000 and here plus 23 lakhs 60,000 positive so overall a plus b plus c comes to 2 lakh 90,000 a plus b plus c comes to how much 2 lakh 90,000 total changes in cash and cash equivalent is 2 lakh 90,000 now what we have to do over here is we have to add we have to add opening balance of cash and cash equivalents opening balance of cash and cash equivalents all of you can see over here what is the opening balance of cash and cash equivalents in the question this amount 60,000 we have to add and answer must come 3,50,000 okay opening 60 we have to add answer must be closing balance so if I add 60,000 over here then all of you verify this 2,90,000 plus 60,000 do we get 3,50,000 as closing balance of cash and cash equivalents or not so that is our answer okay this should match at the end so this is how you have to make a cash flow statement one question I have taken in this session one more question I'll be taking up in the next session do watch it for the same Do watch out for the same in that question I will be including some workings how to find missing figures I'll teach you in the next session in brief quick revision again how to find missing figures of purchase of asset purchase of any intangible tangible or fixed asset and how to make workings for the same I'll explain you in my next session so keep practicing keep studying all the best for your board exams bye everyone